This video pretty much shows you how to reseal a um, bath, shower or sink. And so I will be showing you the tools to use, how I select the sealant, you know, to be utilized in the bathroom, as well as how to remove the defective sealant and reseal the bath or replace it with the sealant that we have selected. And so, for the sealant installation and removal process, you're going to need a couple of tools, you know, like your scraper, which I've got here, your Stanley knife, um, your blade, your Fuji kit, which is instrumental or very pertinent to have, your dust mask or face mask, your hand gloves, you know, your sealant gun, um, your sealant, of course. I'll show you how to select the appropriate sealant for installing, you know, your sealant gun here as, as well, okay? And you know, selecting the right sealant is, is really important here. We've got the Dow Seal 785 and bacteria resistant uh, acetoxy silicone sealant. For the successful completion of any job, you are as good as your preparation, you know, your skill and the quality of the tools that you're using. And so delving into, you know, selecting the type of silicone that you do require is a land uh, minefield. But I'll do my best in, you know, identifying what kind of silicone sealant is, is best suited. When you look at a wide range or spectrum of sealants, you will find out that the sealants that you come across are either low modulus, medium high or high modulus. OK, before we go any further, this may be purely hypothetical. But the only law that this classification hinges on is the young modulus law of elasticity which essentially is the property of a material that tells us how easily it can stretch and deform, otherwise known as the ratio of the tensile stress to the tensile strain. And so basically, stress is the amount of force applied per unit area, and strain is the extension per unit length. So let's think about what we're doing. I think that when you're trying to choose the sealant, you should take into account or you should factor in um, the type of movement, force or traction that will be applied to the material. And the material in question is the sealant and the bathtub or the shower. So when you're selecting your sealant, ask yourself pertinent questions. Would it just be for yourself as the adult, you know, who would be pretty much stayed in the bath, as opposed to having kids in the bath all the time, who would, you know, spend extended periods in the bath, have a lot of traction and movement, and, you know, be swimming in the bathtub? Armed with this information, we can proceed to select the appropriate sealant. Low modulus sealants are generally used outside as they accommodate more movements such as expansion joint. Low modulus acetoxy are cost effective all rounders. They are suitable for a wide variety of general building, glazing, interior and exterior applications and adhere to many common building materials. And the cure for low modulus can be neutral cure or acetoxy cure. Neutral cure essentially means that it's basically almost odorless, as opposed to acetoxy cure, which means that it kind of gives off a vinegary odor. Whereas the low modulus neutral sealants are the best option for sealing UPVC windows or door frames exteriors. Low modulus neutral cure provide better adhesion, accommodate more movement, and are generally longer lasting than the low modulus acetoxies. So pretty much for the low modulus, you can have them in the acetoxy or the neutral cure, okay? And what about the high modulus? You know, you necessarily wouldn't find the high modulus, you know, in a neutral cure. You would usually get the high modulus as an acetoxy um, cure type of sealant. You know, like I said, they give off, they give off a vinegary odor um, and they have a faster cure in that their neutral cure sealants. Suffice to say, you would usually get your high modulus as an acetoxy. OK, and not neutral cure and the high modulus acetoxy are mostly commonly used in the kitchen, you know, for sanitary applications. And, you know, they ensure that the sealant contains contains a fungicide. OK, the high modulus sealants accommodate less movement and are used on interior joints as they have antifungicides preventing bacterial growth in damp prone areas such as your bathroom. 
So like I said, you may be tempted to think, oh, I've got to use a high modulate sealant, but not too fast. Let's think about what we're doing. If you've got a lot of kids, you know, going to be using, you know, that going to be using your bathroom, you might want to use a low modulus neutral cure. And I'll tell you why, okay? And that's because low modulus sealants are stretchy, but they're not hard wearing. They offer better adhesion and accommodate more movement. The sealants are generally very long lasting and you can find that find them being used, you know, in the glazing of windows in swimming pool buildings, okay? So if you use the low modulus acetoxy silicone sealant application, just know that as it cures it releases acetic acid which smells a little like vinegar, as previously discussed before. It is commonly used, it's more rigid, you know, and you know the fuel cure is quick. On the downside, it generally has poor adhesion and leaves much to be desired. But if you decide to use the low modulus neutral cure, neutral meaning alkoxy, you know, the, the silicone sealants release alcohol as the cure. It almost has no smell. They've got, you know, better adhesive property for a greater number of materials than the acetoxy. You know, the only downside of the neutral cure is that they can be more expensive and it's slower to cure at one to five days, depending on the thickness, the temperature and humidity conditions. Okay. Suffice to say, if you want to choose a sealant for your kid's bathroom, you know, go for the low modulus and neutral cure, okay? But if it is a combination of adults and kids in the bath, then, you know, it's best suited to go for the high modulus acetoxy or the medium high modulus acetoxy, okay? As you wouldn't readily get the high modulus in a neutral cure, so just go for the high modulus acetoxy or the medium high modulus acetoxy okay so basically high modulus sealants are less stretchy but more hard wearing they are recommended for use in ceiling baths showers sinks wash basins kitchen worktops and many other sanitary and internal applications so if i were taking into account kids and adults that will, will be using the bath when selecting a certain type of sealant i will be going for the medium high modulus acetoxy sealant okay so the dial seal is a very good brand and here you can see the dial seal 781 acetoxy silicone sealant so the 781 785 and you know the third sealant here are all medium high modulus silicone sealants and the fourth sealant that you've got here is a low modulus neutral cure and you can see neutral written there okay pretty much the unibond you know is quite cheap in the market doesn't state if it's a low modulus or high modulus so i would not be using it for personal reasons but you can use it if you want to okay but i just find out that it provides a lot of coloration when you use it the everflex premium 450 low modulus neutral cure it's a very good sealant as well but just make sure that you're selecting the white color you know our sealants can come in white buff black brown gray trans oak you know in a host of colors so for all sealants just make sure that when you're purchasing them you know that it's actually the white one that you want if you want the translucent sealant get the translucent sealant if you want the clear get the clear sealant okay and for the everflex 200 low modulus acetoxy sealant it is translucent just like you know the 450 which is translucent as well but when i opened up the first cartridge for the 200 it, it was all solid on the inside so pretty much ineffective you can't get any, any traction with your sealant gun so i've got a replacement one from the supplier and hopefully um it should i should be able to get some sealant out of it okay we've got methylated spirit here for degreasing so it's you know pertinent that we've got that to degrease you know um, the bathtub. So I've also got some white spirit here to degrease my tools, but I necessarily wouldn't use that to degrease the bathtub because it doesn't evaporate as quickly as the methylated spirit. So using your frog tip is subjective. If you know, if I'm doing the bath, I tend to use it. If I'm doing showers, I don't use it. So it's subjective, okay? Some call it frog, some call it painter's tape, okay? So here I have also got the OB1 multi-surface construction sealant and adhesive. And this one is the clear version. It doesn't specifically say if it's low modulus or high modulus, but it does say at the back that OB1 is odorless and contains no solvent, okay? I presume that it is low modulus and it's a low modulus neutral cure since it says it's odorless. I've used it to seal broken plastic in the exterior and it was quite rigid, you know, outside. 
not, you know, sealing around wash basin taps and your and your bath top taps. You know, I find out that, you know, this um multi clear surface sealant, you know, starts to provide some form of coloration. So aesthetically it wasn't looking very good, okay? But you know, it shouldn't be discounted. You know, it's got many outstanding claims like it can seal underwater. It can be used in the food industry, it can be used in the bathroom, in a wet room application. You know, pretty much on a multitude of building substrates like your marble, polycarbonate, PU adhesives, water adhesives, polystyrene, glass mirror, ceramics, copper, lead, and plastics, and small surface area. You know, it's got a high tensile bond strength and aluminium, okay? So, I will keep trying it out, you know, with other substrates and, um, you know, it's a good one to have around, but, you know... And here we've got Fuji tools of varying lengths that I will be using to spread over the sealants in the in the top, okay? And when we look at you know the gap filler length on you know on the Fuji kit profiling tool, in measuring we come up with varying lengths, okay? And so this segment is 15 centimeter, the next segment is 12 centimeter, and the next segment is six centimeter. Then followed by a static pinpoint 0 cm, 8 cm, then 10 cm, pinpoint 0 cm, a convex 2 cm aperture, 8 cm, 6 cm and concave profiled. Not sure how to read the 21, the 28, the 14, the 17 profiles as could be a manufacturing defect but you you get the hang of it don't you and all you pretty much need to do with them um, fuji tools is to look for the greatest gap and you know select the smallest tool to cover the gap two to three millimeter on each side and so prior to um sealing up the bath and removing you know the sealant you know get a visual inspection you know of the bath and you can see on the sides of the bath and on the ground or the floor you can see that you know it wasn't properly sealed certain gaps are apparent you know that i would need to um to seal up you know but first i'd have to take out all of them sealants that you see there then replace with the um, new sealant you can see also see some gaps at the corner there okay if you look at the line of travel of the sealant you know along the perimeter of the bath it looks like it's been properly sealed but it hasn't and why can i tell that it's not been properly sealed because i've got water leaking on the other side of the bedroom so i'm going to take out the sealant and seal it appropriately and also to be sure that water isn't leaking from them tiles i will have to take out the sealant from there and reseal it again okay but pretty much reseal you know the edge of the tiles and also visually inspect you know between them tiles if i find any holes there cover up them holes I do not want to leave any room for leaks so you know make sure that you know holes like that I've got there I cover them up you know I, I take up the sealant and replace them with new sealant okay I also take up the sealant around the tap and you know reseal it with you know a clear sealant so in order to take up the sealant the first step would be to get the Fuji profile tool and measure you know the previous sealant that's been that was there and that measures about 15 centimeter for the largest gap and 12 centimeter for the smaller gap the sealant's gap line of travel in the bath is not even so i would used armed with that information so i'll cut you know the um tube of the sealant you know at 15 centimeter because that's the largest gap okay or you can cut it at the smallest profile gap which is 12 centimeter so pretty much this is roughly the area that the sealant would cover. So I'll cut, you know, the um, sealant nozzle, you know, at 12 centimeter or 15 centimeter. I think what really matters is that, you know, you cut it at 90 degrees as opposed to 45 degrees. Okay, so you cut it straight through as opposed to at, at a slanted angle. So cut, cut it that way right through. Okay, so cut it perpendicular at 90 degrees or guillotine style. The size you need to cut the nozzle at, you know, may vary depending on where you're trying to seal. So I'll cut it, you know, with the smallest size first as opposed to, you know, just the largest size. But what's important is that you cut the nozzle at 90 degrees, okay? We're also going to need um, a scraper blade and a standing knife to get out the sealant residue or deposit. And so here we're going to, you know, get the standing knife flush, you know, with the sealant and the bath tub. We're going to take care not to scratch, you know, the um, bath tub, and we're going to do it in segments. So 
we run the blade through, say about twice or thrice, then subsequently cut the sealant at 90 degrees as soon as you get to the end of the of the cut through length. You don't have to run the, the blade all through, like I said, you know, just do it in little chunks, okay? And so here you can see that, you know, I cut it at 90 degrees here. Then subsequently cut the top section along the line of travel as well, you know, so I can get, you know, the bottom and the top part of the sealant off relatively easily. It's more like carving out a lipped um, stick, you know, out of the um, sealant. And once I've got a sizable chunk out, begin to lift, you know, the sealant with both fingers or with the aid of the standing knife or with the aid, you know, better still with a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, okay? So if a tiny piece of sealant comes off as opposed to the full length, you can use a scraper. You need to scrape off, you know, the rest of them sealant, okay? Just work the blade, work it smoothly and floss. Just make sure that it's not actually scratching, you know, the bath, okay? Just work it, work it nice and smooth. Use both the combination of the blade and scraper to, you know, to work the sealant out, okay? Take care not to hurt yourself whilst using both blades. And from here onwards, you know, use your Phillips flathead screwdriver to get a sizable chunk out. As soon as you're able to get, you know, the lip of the sealant to lift, use your screwdriver to give the lip of the sealant some extra lift and you use your screwdriver to also dig out um, the sealant. That way you can get more of, more of the lump of the sealant out as opposed to just little chunks, okay? Just scrape out to get out the sealant residues that are left behind, okay? And, you know, use your standing knife to, to, to cut through sealants that are still, you know, set in, set in place. Or stuck between the tile and the, and the bath. Just work your way through and whatever obstacle you face, you know, just, you know, take the relevant tool to, to, get, your, to get the sealant out. With time, you will develop the skill and get accustomed to it, but this is basically the idea. So pretty much cut through the sealant with your standing knife, you know, scrape out the sealant, you know, the ones that are still stuck with the scraper and, you know, use your screwdriver, you know, to, to get, you know, an extra push of the sealant out, okay? And so you can see I've got this massive chunk out instead of fiddling with little bits, okay? So I will repeat the same process to get the sealant around the tap out. Repeat and reproduce the process. Visually inspect the line of travel of the sealant around the bath and take out, you know, the leftovers of them sealant residues. Just make sure that, you know, checking all the grooves, making sure that, you know, the old sealant or the obsolete sealant is taken out properly, okay? So just carve through the tiles carefully, you know, make sure you're not scratching the tiles or the bath and, you know, get the leftover sealants out. You know, stick your screwdriver in there as much as possible and, you know, scrape out the sealants as I've done here and, you know, you should um, be fine. The sealant between the wall and the tile measures about 8 centimetre, whereas, you know, the sealant around the bath, you know, varies. It could be 15 centimeter eight centimeter depending on how you know it was installed previously so i will be working the side of the tiles first so that i do not waste excess sealant between the wall and the tiles now think about what we're doing so if you open up you know the nozzle of your sealant you know to 15 centimeter you're going to get too much um sealant on the eight centimeter um sealant wall okay so the next stage would be to remove forward or foreign object debris. You know, we don't want any contaminants that would contaminate the um, sealant. Every leftover residue, be it sand, dirt, dust, you know, should be removed. So subsequently, I will be needing the heat gun and the methylated spray to clean and dry the bath, okay? The heat gun necessarily to speed up the process of drying and, you know, also be using like a kitchen towel to... to um, wipe off the bath with a spirit methylated spirit is quite strong so ensure that you're putting on your gloves and your face mask you know to prevent inhaling the fumes that come from methyl alcohol it, it, why i'm choosing to use this is that it evaporates pretty quickly as opposed to your white spirits that you know do not um, evaporate really easily you know ideally you want your bath you know nice and dry before you apply your silicone sealant and you also want the, the bath, you know, void of any contamination. So here, we're filling up the bath because we're factoring in, you know, children usage as well as adult usage and a lot of traction and movement within the bath. And, you know, the young modulus law of elasticity comes into play again. Where the stress is the amount of force applied per unit area and the strain is the extension per unit length. 
Suffice to say, the ratio of stress to strain or force over extension per unit length. We know that the sealant we're going to use is either low modulus or medium high modulus, you know, so the bath through swell, we need to stretch it out okay, so that it can take the hit, you know, when there is that impact in the bath, you know, your sealant would not give in. So you need to take that into account and that's why we're stretching out the bath, okay. So as the volume of water fills onto the bath, you can see that it starts compressing, you know, the bath, the bath down and the gap between the tiles and the bath begins to increase. And so while that's filling up, I'll, be, I'll still be drying off, you know, the, um, the sides of the bath to ensure that it's not wet when I want to um, apply my sealant. Profile between the wall and the tile is 8cm, so I will open up the nozzle to 8cm at the right angle at 90 degrees, then subsequently open up to 12cm and 15 centimeter when I'm doing the bath, okay? So that lever there controls the gun. When that lever is pushed down, then you can push the, the flat round ring on the piston down as well. So you will not have any traction down the piston if you do not pull that lever. But pushing forward, you don't need to push the lever, okay? You can either pull on the trigger, okay? To get the, the um, piston to move forward, or you know, you push the head of the um, piston forward and that should get you know the flat ring onto the base of the sealant. So I'm running the sealant at 90 degrees and not 45 degrees. So I'm pushing the sealant in as opposed to just gliding or sliding it through. So as I run my hands down, I pull on the trigger and that gets sealant out of the tube, okay? The next step would be to use the 8 centimeter profile Fuji um, tool to spread the sealant. Again, that's been done at 90 degrees and whatever excess sealant comes off, I wipe off with a towel, okay? And if I find out that sealant isn't evident in some of the other holes, I, I repeat and reproduce the process, wipe off the excess sealant until I'm happy and confident that I've got sealant. In all of the crevices or apertures, if you're not getting a smooth spread, you know, flick the um, profile tool on the other side and, you know, run it through the wall and see if, if that helps, okay? And, you know, for the other gaps around the bathtub, I will open up the nozzle further at, you know, 12 and 15 centimetre and begin to run the sealant in. So here, the sealant application is applied at 90 degrees and not 45 degrees, okay? So I'm squeezing on the trigger and pushing the sealant in as opposed to, you know, just slanting the sealant gun and applying the sealant. And that way I get more sealant in because that's the idea. You want to get sealant in in there. You don't you don't want it to be you don't want it to be infinitesimal or in very small amounts. So I get the profile tool and remove the excess sealant, you know, from the side of the wall and the tub. I wouldn't advocate that you use soapy water to prevent you know the sealant from sticking on the tiles and on the tub. If soapy water has got the propensity to prevent sealant from sticking onto your tiles and your bath tub, why would you want to include that? You know. Um, during your prep process. Decide to prep your area with soapy water prior to applying the sealant. Think about what you're doing. So on one hand, you're prevent preventing the sealant from sticking onto your tub and your tiles. But on the other hand, once you've applied your sealant and you've got soapy water behind the sealant, that could be acting as an aperture for leaks to, to run through, okay? By all means, if you're really concerned about aesthetics and, you know, having smooth fine lines, you, by all means, use your tapes, okay? Your painter's tape. So when you're selecting your low modulus or medium high acetoxy sealant, make sure that, you know, you choose the right colour. Some come in, in the clear form, some come in, in the white form and so on and so forth. And so in between them tiles, I've changed the profile to 10 centimetre to accommodate the area of the sealant being applied. You can prepare the area with or without tapes, but do not use soapy water. Use your profile tool to remove the excess sealant. And also use the Fuji profile tool to spread the sealant between them gaps. Do not use your thumb or your fingers to spread the sealant as, you know, bacteria leaves on your skin and it could make the sealant more prone to, to bacteria developing, okay? You've pretty much got like your cutie bacterium, your corine bacteria, your staphylococcus and your micrococcus um, organisms that live on your skin, okay? So the less surface to surface contact between your skin and your sealant, the better for you. Don't take my word for it, but the Dow Seal or the Dow Corning is a pretty good brand, you know, from personal experience when you use it. The sealant doesn't have any coloration and um, I haven't got any leaks so far since I used the dial seal, okay? 
provided you apply the sealants properly and you know it's i haven't seen any mold growth you know for for a very long time okay around the um, the sealant there's been no coloration mold or grime you know over the sealant so at this stage i pretty much repeat the process between the tiles the next step of the process would be to block the gap between the tiles and the top you know from the inside first if you look closely the application of the sealant is at 90 degrees as opposed to 45 degrees and if you look closely during the first application majority of the sealant has found its way into the actual gap as opposed to exuding protruding or sticking up from the actual gap the second run would definitely have the sealant you know on the outside of the gap okay before sealing it from the outside and you can't really get you know an opening or a gap between your bath tub and the towel if you haven't filled your bathtub with water so it's absolutely crucial otherwise if you just seal it without you know filling up the tub with water you just get getting an external seal there is nothing to say that you know when water percolates or goes through the external seal you know it just hits the wall straight off and you start having leaks maybe for example in your bedroom your dining or your kitchen or wherever but if you have an internal frontier seal you know, acting as a frontier between, you know, the wall and the external seal, you have a pretty, pretty much um, good adhesive bonded um, sealant that's been applied. Suffice to say, what we're trying to achieve is a solid, rigid, flexible, adhesive bonded sealed, um, sealant. And subsequently, we will test the hypothesis to see how the sealant prevents water from seeping through when it comes in co contact with it, okay? And personally, I would let it dry for about 24 hours before I start taking out the painter's tape. But like I said, it's pretty much up to you if you decide to um, use your tape or, or not. But, you know, use your profiling tool as opposed to sticking your hands onto this, the actual sealant itself, okay? And during the process of spreading the sealant, you know, um, on the external gap, if you find minute holes, you know, just use your profiling tool and rerun the sealant residue that's resident on the profiling tube back onto the minute gap. So I'm pretty much done here. The next step of the process would be to wait for the sealant to dry and then, you know, take off the uh, masking tape appropriately. And so we've also run sealant, you know, between all of the edges of all of the combined tiles. You know, and where we've got sealant paint peeling off from removing the frogs or the painter's tape, click on the link in the description to see how to rework it. And from here onwards, the litmus test would be to see how the sealant holds out when it comes into contact with um, water. And as you can see, it's watertight proof. Um, in the past, water would sit there and seep through, but now it doesn't seep through anymore. You know, it's, it's a solid joint. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the joint, okay? Make sure your bathroom is, is free from moist, you know, after a shower, just give it a good rub or clean with bleach and water, you know, it prevents, you know, bacteria from building up. And that's about it, really. If you found the information in the video useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Goodbye.